This Vitara is Suzuki's core offering in the fashionable small SUV segment and has been usefully improved in this facelifted fourth generation LY series guise. The engine range has been completely updated, plus style and safety have both been further enhanced. As before, a bit of substance has been mixed in with the style here, especially if you opt for one of the all-grip four-wheel drive versions. And the resulting package continues to be a strong class contender. No other brand can rival Suzuki's range of differing options for those in search of a small SUV. And here's the one that most of the brand's customers choose, the fashionable, practical Vitara. This particular one's a usefully improved version of the successful fourth generation LY series model. It's an important car too. When the Japanese maker first launched this Mark IV design back in 2015, competition was relatively scarce in the small SUV segment. Now, virtually every mainstream brand has a little super mini based Duke genre crossover. Suzuki though goes further. For those in search of such a car, it also offers the rugged Jimny, the more city oriented Ignis and the surprisingly spacious family friendly SX4 S Cross. The Vitara offers the best bits of all these models combined into a package that quite a few customers have found to be quite appealing as it always has. Now, the Vitara model line is now over three decades old. It's provenance dating all the way back to the launch of the cute first generation version in 1988. In 1998, a second generation design pushed a little further up market, as did the third generation JT series Grand Vitara model of 2005. A decade later, that Mark III version's 1.6 litre petrol and diesel engines were carried forward with merely minor modifications into this fourth generation LY series car. And not surprisingly, by the end of the 21st century second decade, we're beginning to fall behind the segment standard in terms of frugality and efficiency. With this Mark IV model's facelift announced late in 2018, Suzuki took the opportunity to fully replace those two core power plants and update much else besides. Now all variants are petrol powered and feature the company's turbocharged booster jet technology in 1 litre and 1.4 litre forms with both units promising greater frugality, lower emissions and improved mid-range pulling power. Other changes to the Vitara lineup lie with upgraded safety provision, extra equipment, and sharper styling. As before, this remains one of the few cars in the class to offer a four wheel drive option, and the Vitara value proposition continues to look competitive. It all sounds quite promising. Time to put this car to the test. Suzuki knows how to do sporty cars. If you doubt that, ask your dealer to let you have a go in the brand's Swift Sport hot hatch. So perhaps it's not that surprising that this Vitara is one of the more engaging small SUVs you could consider. Most of that's due to the car's relatively light weight. A recently introduced Vitara attribute, prior to the launch of this fourth generation design in 2015, previous models lugged around a clunky old ladder frame chassis. This one gets a much more sophisticated TECT or Total Effective Control technology platform, which uses lots of high strength, lightweight steel. All of that remains as before. What's changed with this revised LY series model though is what lies beneath the bonnet. With the original version of this Mark IV design, almost all buyers chose between a couple of 1.6 litre engines, a normally aspirated petrol unit and a turbo diesel, both developing 120 PS. Now though, the entire Vitara range is petrol powered and based around the brand's turbo booster jet technology. It features in an entry-level three-cylinder one-litre unit and in the four-cylinder 1.4-litre power plant that we're trying here. If you're not planning to regularly venture very far afield in your Vitara, the one-litre engine may actually be all you really need. This unit compensates for its diminutive size by using a tiny turbocharger to push out 111 PS and 170 newton metres of pulling power. 
For comparison, we'll tell you that the previous 1.6 litre normally aspirated engine developed only 156 newton metres of torque. In other words, the new base 1 litre booster jet unit will feel usefully more rapid through the gears if you're trading up to this updated model. This engine propelling the Vitara to 62 miles an hour in 11 and a half seconds en route to a 111 mile per hour maximum. You can even select a little red and yellow power and torque readout in the instrument binnacle that'll show you just how much difference the booster jet's turbo is making as you accelerate through the gears. Just five ratios are provided with the one litre manual model. As an option on front driven three cylinder versions, there's a six speed automatic, though with that variant, torque falls slightly to 160 newton metres. Three cylinder engines of this type in compact models are normally characterised by a buzzy thrum, accompanied by vibrations through the steering wheel and gear stick. Some brands, like Peugeot for example, have addressed this by fitting balancer shafts, but Suzuki's found a cheaper, simpler solution by deliberately unbalancing the crank counterweights. No, we didn't understand what that meant either, but we could more easily get our heads around the way that this measure turns side to side vibrations into vertical ones, which are in turn themselves dialed out with clever engine mounts. It works too, creating a much smoother delivery of power than you'd get from say, a rival one litre EcoBoost powered Ford EcoSport. Thanks to the demise of diesel in the Vitara range, your only other engine option in this car is the four-cylinder 1.4-litre booster jet engine we mentioned earlier, the one we're trying here. Here, as you'd expect, progress is more relaxed and more refined on the highway, but of course not quite as clean and economic. There's 140 PS on tap, and whatever your transmission choice, you get a useful 220 newton meters of torque. In a front-driven model, 62 miles an hour occupies nine and a half seconds on the way to a 124 mile an hour top speed, which is probably about as fast as you'd ever want to go in a car of this kind. Opting for the larger power plant doesn't get you any increase in towing capacity, which is rated at a very modest 1.2 tonnes for both engines. Robbed of the chance to improve that by specifying a diesel engine, caravanners are now likely to look elsewhere. As mentioned earlier, the Suzuki feels relatively agile through the bends by small SUV standards. The car's eager to change direction and body rolls decently controlled. You even get a welcome bit of initial bite from the steering when you first turn in, though unfortunately the response gets a bit vaguer the faster you go. Traction's good too, and on that subject, it's worth pointing out one of this car's key selling points, the fact that it's one of the few models in its segment that can be ordered with four-wheel drive, the Suzuki all-grip system that we've chosen to try here. This isn't the kind of permanent 4x4 setup that allowed small Suzuki SUVs of the past to penetrate some of the least friendly parts of our planet. Instead, it's one of those lighter part-time systems, more appropriate for muddy car parks and slippery tarmac terrain, using an electronically controlled clutch pack that distributes drive between front and rear under orders from the circular drive mode select dial down here by the gear stick. As with most such systems, this one will leave you in front wheel drive most of the time unless a lack of traction is detected, in which case the rear wheels will be dialed in. That's what happens if you leave the whole thing in its set and forget auto mode. There are three other options though. Sport is meant for more spirited driving and in this mode up to 20% of torque is diverted to the rear wheels for livelier handling which leaves us with two options intended for the kind of more serious off-road use this car will very rarely see. Yes, you get capable approach and departure angles, 18.2 and 28.2 degrees respectively, but the relatively modest 185 millimeters of ground clearance will make it difficult to get anywhere that could realistically put these to the test. Should you manage that though, two final drive mode select settings are waiting. The main off-piste option is to twist the rotary dial into snow. The name a bit misleading as this is actually a mode intended for all kinds of slippery, muddy 
muddy conditions. Here the system will stay in four-wheel drive all the time, constantly varying the power split front and rear depending on the conditions. That'll be ideal the next time you have to venture out on an icy frozen morning. Finally, there's the lock setting, activated by pushing this button to the left of the drive mode select dial. This splits the torque equally front to rear to give you the maximum chance of extricating this car from somewhere you probably shouldn't have ventured to in the first place. But venturing into the wild isn't really Suzuki's thing. The brand has its Jimny model for those likely to want to do that. A Vitara, though, is a touch more capable than your average small SUV, something that'll deliver that bit of extra peace of mind when conditions turn treacherous. And on the subject of peace of mind, Suzuki has now engineered into this car a level of camera-driven safety tech that's difficult to better in this segment. Unfortunately, it's only fitted to the pricier top spec and four-wheel drive variants and isn't even optional elsewhere in the range. That'll no doubt change when the next generation version of this car eventually arrives. In the meantime, this Mark IV LY series model should continue to attract a ready following. This may be a Vitara for a different age, but it's still very much a Vitara, even if it does only come with five doors these days. Now, visual ties with the 1988 original are maintained by the traditional clamshell bonnet, the front wing vents, the rising feature lines of the flanks, and the shape of the headlights. As you would expect though, this is a more modern interpretation of what a car of this kind should be. And this facelifted fourth generation LY series model aims to emphasize this with a few care carefully chosen styling updates. Most of these can be found here at the front, where the grille now features six vertical slats rather than the two horizontal ones used previously. This lower trapezoidally shaped central section to the bumper has been redesigned too. As before, sculpted fog lamp housing sit either side of it next to the fashionably vertical daytime running lights that add an extra overtaking presence. From the side, little has changed. As before, most Vitaras will be ordered with this black pearl metallic contrast colour roof, while the lower part of the profile continues to feature two key feature lines. One gently rises from front to rear at waist level, while the other lower crease begins at the front wheel arch, then curves up into the rear flanks. The entry-level variant that few consider gets 16-inch wheels, but otherwise this Suzuki favours 17-inch rims, offered either in silver painted form or with this smarter polished finish. At the rear, the revised tail lamps now feature a more distinctive LED display, and the lamp in the centre of this under bumper section is now a reversing light. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff you can't see, namely this model's stiff, sophisticated TECT platform designed around what Suzuki calls total effective control technology. This uses lots of high strength steel to make the structure very strong, but also low in weight, which is the main reason why this Vitara weighs relatively little by class standards. Its curb weight can tip the scales at as little as 1,160 kilos, which, to give you some perspective, is 120 kilos lighter than a comparable Ford EcoSport, and fully 265 kilos, or the weight of an entire family, lighter than an entry-level Vauxhall Mokka X. Still think all small SUVs are much the same? Time to take a seat up front. Now, in this sector of the market, manufacturers tend either to produce a properly premium feeling cabin, like that in, say, a Mazda CX-3 or a Volkswagen T-Cross, or they disguise the hard, lower-grade plastics necessary to achieve an affordable asking price with a kind of clever, eye-catching design you'd find in, say, a Nissan Juke or a Fiat 500X. Here, Suzuki's tried a combination between these two approaches, which some might quite like, but which for others will smack of being neither one thing nor the other. 
This top spec SZ5 model certainly appears at first glance to be quite plush, with suede fabric used for the seat upholstery and the doors. But when we first tested this car back in 2015, we commented that there was much less of a quality feel further down the range with the more affordable variants that most customers will choose. To try and improve things in that regard, Suzuki's upgraded the seat upholstery fabric across the lineup and given the upper part of the instrument panel a smarter soft touch finish. To be thanked though, more than that was really needed if Suzuki was going to give this cabin any kind of really premium feel. Still, everything appears to be of reasonable quality and the various fixtures and fittings appear to have been decently screwed together by the Hungarian factory. As for the kind of trendiness that buyers of small SUVs tend to want, well, that's not particularly evident with the standard trim levels, but your dealer will assure you that you can add it in. The trim around the gear stick, the rings around the air vents and clock, even the steering wheel and the gear knob can all feature a piano black finish, or if you're feeling really brave, all these areas can be trimmed in either orange, turquoise, white, or red such token efforts at trendiness will probably be enough to satisfy buyers shopping at the lower end of the range, but folk interested in much pricier variants like this one may be less forgiving. Still, there's plenty to like here. This upper circular analog clock is a nice touch and virtually all models get the brand's usual smartphone link audio system accessible by this seven inch center screen. Unfortunately, the graphics of this monitor remain distinctly uh, low rent, but it does include standard navigation and a reversing camera. Plus, it's been designed for easy use, even if you're wearing gloves. There's an incorporated DAB audio system too, though it's a pity that you don't get proper knobs and buttons to control it. Still, the steering wheel switch gear alleviates much of the need you'd otherwise have to stab away at the touchscreen. We like the driving position. It's commandingly high set for a start, which isn't something you can take for granted on a small SUV these days. All round visibility is, as a result, very good, which will make it easy to transition into this car from a conventional small hatchback. We'd like to have seen lumbar support, at least as an option for the driver's seat, a chair that could do with a bit of extra side bolstering, but it positions you comfortably in front of the reach and rake adjustable three-spoke wheel through which you view a revised instrument cluster. This now features a much improved central color display positioned between the two main instrument dials, which shows an impressive variety of options. The fuel economy stuff is quite useful, but will typical Vitara buyers really need a G-force motion meter or these curiously presented red and yellow power and torque readouts? Or indeed, the graphically streaming displays showing acceleration intensity and braking force in real time? Apparently, Suzuki thinks they will. Oddment space is reasonably well provided for with properly sized door pockets, a decently shaped glove box and a pair of cup holders in the centre console next to the thankfully conventional handbrake. There's also a useful storage area in front of the gear lever that'll be ideal for your smartphone, especially as USB and 12 volt points lie close by. It's a pity though that there's no option to charge it out of sight in this deep storage box between the seats. There's also an open cubby by the driver's right knee and an overhead storage compartment for your sunglasses. Let's take a seat in the back. Now it certainly ought to help here that this Vitara is one of the larger small SUVs you can buy. It's 4,175 millimeter length, making it, for example, 40 millimeters longer than a Nissan Juke and 53 millimeters longer than a Renault Captur. That also makes the rear compartment a little more comfortable than you might expect from a class of car essentially based upon the underpinnings of a city runabout. as indeed it does. Now, you certainly couldn't call this rear seat spacious, but for sure there's more legroom than you'd probably expect from a compact crossover. Unfortunately, there's no opportunity to further improve things by either sliding or reclining this bench, but few contenders in this segment offer that kind of option. 
Now, headrooms at a bit of a premium in this top SZ5 variant, thanks to the fitment of this panoramic glass roof, one of the largest it's possible to have in this class of car. It does at least fill what would otherwise be quite a dark area with welcome light. Apart from deep bottle holders in the doors, there's not much in terms of storage or connectivity provided for rear seat folk. Uh, there's no central armrest, and rather meanly, Suzuki only provides a seat back pocket on the left-hand side. On the plus side, this central transmission tunnel is usefully low, so if it's necessary to transport three adults, they won't be as cramped back here, as might be the case with some rivals. We'll finish with a look at the boot. Lift the rear hatch, and there's a class competitive 375 litres of space on offer. If you need more, your dealer will direct you towards the brand's alternative SX4S cross model, which offers a 430 litre capacity. Most will be satisfied by what's on offer here. The loading area can be quite wide if you take out the borders uh, to these corner compartments. Suzuki hasn't forgotten to include a 12 volt socket here on the right, and there's a bag hook on the left and tie down points too, though only a couple of them. Standard across the range is this handy adjustable height boot floor, and there's more space beneath the cargo area base too, though only because Suzuki declines to offer any kind of spare wheel, something we always disapprove of in any car purporting to be any kind of SUV. If you need more room, pushing forward the 60-40 split rear bench frees up 710 litres of space, and the floor can be completely flat if you position the adjustable boot floor in its upper position. The Vitara lineup's price span ranges from 17 to 26,000 pounds, so it remains one of the better value small SUVs you could consider, especially so when you take into account that it's one of the larger contenders amongst super mini based crossovers in this segment. We're a little disappointed though that pricing has risen as much as it has. The lead in figure when we first tested this car back in 2015 was around 14,000 pounds. It's also worth remembering that if you ignore the price-leading SZ4 derivative, a base variant that few customers want, the starting price for the range is actually around £19,000. With diesel options now a thing of the past for Vitara buyers, there's a choice of two booster jet turbocharged petrol engines, a one litre three cylinder unit with 111 PS, or for £1,000 more, the power plant we're trying here, a 1.4 litre four cylinder unit with 140 PS. The smaller engine works with a five speed manual gearbox, the larger one with a six speed manual transmission. In both cases, there's the option of a six speed auto gearbox box for £1,350 more. Unusually in this class, there's also the chance to specify four-wheel drive, Suzuki's on-demand all-grip system. We're trying that here. With the base one-litre engine, the extra traction comes only with manual transmission, but if you go for the 1.4, there are both manual and auto options. As for trim choices, well, that price-leading SZ4 variant comes only with one litre power and a manual gearbox, but in mid-range SZT spec, you get all the various engine, drivetrain and transmission options we've just mentioned. Those interested in the 1.4 litre unit have the option to pay an extra £2,500 to move from SZT spec and get themselves the plusher SZ5 level of trim we're trying here, which features Suzuki's latest advances in camera driven safety kit. Enough on range structure, let's look at how the Vitara fits into the Suzuki SUV model range. You'd expect it to be pricier than the brand's entry-level compact SUVs, the Jimny and the Ignis, which have starting prices in the £12,000 to £13,000 bracket. Those are, after all, slightly smaller models. So using the same logic, you'd also expect a Vitara to be fractionally cheaper than its fractionally larger SX4 S-Cross showroom stablemate. And that's pretty much how it turns out. A similarly engined and specced SX4 S-Cross will set you back around £1,800 more. On to the value proposition offered by Vitara pricing in the small 
SUV segment. Now, as usual, for proper comparisons, you'll need to be comparing apples with apples by looking at B segment super mini based SUVs rather than the C segment family hatchback based crossovers that Suzuki more accurately targets with that slightly larger SX4 S Cross model we just mentioned. In other words, if it makes more sense, cars in the Nissan Duke segment rather than the Nissan Qashqai class. Having mentioned the Duke, we'll start our comparisons there and also consider the rival model whose engineering that Nissan shares, Renault's Captur. These two are difficult to compare directly to a Vitara because they use slightly smaller engines with less pulling power. Now, if you're happy to accept that, you could potentially save yourself nearly £2,000 by choosing either a Duke or a Captur over this Suzuki though that difference would be reduced considerably if you equipped either the Nissan or the Renault to match a Vitara's specification. More comparably priced small SUVs in this class that are easier to directly compare to a Vitara include contenders like Ford's EcoSport, Fiat's 500X, Vauxhall's Crossland X, Peugeot's 2008 and Hyundai's Kona, plus Kia's Soul and Stonic models. In addition, you'll also find Citroen's C3 Aircross to be similarly priced if you insist on having the kind of properly modern small turbo engine beneath the bonnet that you'd need for accurate comparison with this Suzuki. The Volkswagen Group's offerings, the Skoda Scala and the Seat Arona are in the same pricing ballpark too, but you'll need a little more if you want to include a Volkswagen T-Cross in your comparisons. Most of the other rivals in this segment have been around in various guises for rather a long time. Both Mitsubishi's ASX and Vauxhall's Mokka X will feel clunkier to drive than this Suzuki, will cost more to run and won't save you much in their most mainstream comparable guises. And you'll be paying slightly more than Suzuki's asking here if you choose to go for comparable versions of segment rivals like Jeep's Renegade, Honda's HRV or Mazda's CX-3. Of course, there are cheaper small SUVs in this class from the real bargain brands that would save you decent money over a Vitara. Sanyong's Tivoli, for example, which could save you up to around £3,000 or more, though that price gap would be much reduced if you equipped a Tivoli to the level of this Suzuki. And much of the price difference that then remained would be eroded over the duration of your ownership period by the Sanyong's higher running costs and lower residuals. Broaden the scope of your search and you could even theoretically get yourself a comparable car of this kind in the really affordable £10,000 to £13,000 bracket if you went for a Dacia Duster, but that car is a much clunkier proposition for urban driving and costs significantly more to run. But let's get to the bottom line here, which is that whatever you pitch against it, the value proposition of this Suzuki will probably end up looking reasonably strong, especially once you've taken dealer offers into account. If having considered all of this, you conclude that it is a Vitara that you really want, then you're gonna to need to know just how generous the Japanese brand has been when it comes to standard specification. Well, let's see. Even the most affordable one liter SZ4 variant gets alloy wheels of at least 16 inches in size, silver roof rails, front fog lamps, climate controlled air conditioning with a pollen filter, cruise control with a speed limiter, electric mirrors and alarm immobilizer, front and rear electric windows, and a decent quality four speaker CD stereo with Bluetooth, a USB input and steering wheel controls. In fact, the only really key item missing is a proper spare wheel, though that does at least free up extra space below the useful adjustable boot floor. Another £2,000 over SZ4 spec will upgrade your Vitara to mid-range SZT trim and get you smarter 17-inch silver painted alloy wheels, rear privacy glass, white stitched upholstery and a rear parking camera that displays on a 7-inch colour infotainment touchscreen via which you access satellite navigation and a smartphone link audio system with a DAB tuner. As mentioned earlier, buyers wanting the 1.4-litre booster jet engine will also be offered this top 
SZ5 trim level, which includes the real niceties. Things like LED projector headlights, suede seat fabric, keyless entry, also headlamps and wipers, power folding mirrors, front and rear parking sensors, a couple of tweeters for the audio system, and a polished finish for the 17-inch alloy wheels. There's also a huge panoramic sunroof that can fill the cabin with light and some key camera-driven electronic safety features that we'll cover in a minute. On to options and personalization. Now, if you're a typical buyer and you've avoided entry-level trim, you'll probably like the idea of combining your chosen paint color with this contrasting black pearl metallic roof. There are various optional 17-inch alloy wheel designs too. You might also want to consider one of Suzuki's exterior personalization packs. There's an urban design pack that's very much style-led, as is the Kuro style pack, which themes exterior elements in black, and the Shiro style pack, which features exterior highlighting in black. Or you could go for a rugged design pack that makes the car look a touch more purposeful with embellishments like body side mouldings and a rear skid plate. You can also add chrome trimming to the door handles, the front bumper corners and around the tail lamps. There's a front grille trim set, an optional rear upper spoiler, and you can add silver skid plates to the front and rear. A side body moulding set is optional and you can add garnishing at the base of the front A pillars. Inside, there's the option of giving the cabin of your Vitara a more individual theme by colour coordinating different elements, the trim around the gear stick and the steering wheel, plus the rings around the air vents and the clock at the top of the centre console. There's also a black door sill trimming set and the option of adding leather finishing for the steering wheel and gear shift gaiter. As for practicalities, well, there's a luggage area, carpet mat, and various cargo trays that fit in the boot. You can also add a protective strip that guards against scratches on the rear loading sill. A tow bar is, of course, optional, and you might well want roof bars, which you'll need for the optional roof box and the roof carriers your dealer can provide for bikes, skis, and snowboards. There are the usual mud flaps and carpet mats, and you can have a protective cover for the rear bench to guard against pet damage. Finally, a word about something that shouldn't cost extra or need to be personalised, basic standards of safety. And Suzuki agrees, hence this car's use of what the brand calls TECT, or Total Effective Control Technology, a design approach based around the extensive use of ultra-high tensile steel for greater impact absorption. As a result, back in 2015, this car was awarded a five-star Euro NCAP safety test rating. Certainly helping in that regard is the fact that this model's standard safety tally includes the driver's knee bag that many rivals make you do without. That's part of a kit list including twin front, side and curtain airbags, ISOFIX child seat fastenings, a pedestrian-friendly bonnet and tyre pressure monitoring system. As for electronic aids, well, as you'd expect, there's ESP stability control and ABS brakes with a brake assist function to help in emergency stops. There's also hill hold control to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. And on all grip four wheel drive models, hill descent control to ease you down slippery slopes. If you want to go further than that, you'll need either an SZT model fitted with all grip four-wheel drive or this top SZ5 variant. These derivatives get Suzuki's latest camera-driven safety technology as standard, a package of kit that disappointingly isn't offered as an option further down the range. If you can stretch to it, then you'll get yourself a setup that uses stereo cameras mounted either side of the interior rear view mirror. These combining with a laser sensor to deliver six key features, autonomous braking, adaptive cruise control, rear cross traffic alert, a blind spot monitor, traffic sign recognition, and lane departure warning. In case you're not familiar with this technology, we'll quickly cover it. Suzuki's version of autonomous braking is what the brand calls dual sensor brake support. The system works at between three and 62 miles an hour, and if it detects a possible hazard, it'll alert you with visual and audible warnings. Should you not respond, then the brakes will be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident, if it can't be avoided completely. 
Adaptive cruise control uses a millimeter wave radar to automatically regulate your distance to the car in front at highway speeds. Rear cross traffic alert warns you of oncoming traffic if you're reversing out of a space. The blind spot monitor warns you of oncoming vehicles when you're pulling off or pulling out to overtake. Traffic sign recognition pictures speed signs and displays them on the dash. And lane departure warning works between 37 and 100 miles an hour to alert you to the fact that the car has drifted over delineated road markings. It also incorporates a lane departure prevention function that gently steers you back to where you ought to be on the road. The idea of a small Duke genre crossover model is to provide lifestyle suv with near super mini style running costs. That's a target this Vitara gets reasonably close to, mainly because it's so much lighter than most of its rivals, thanks mainly to the extensive use of light, ultra-high tensile steel. The entry-level petrol version tips the scales at just 1,160 kilograms, almost exactly the same weight as any conventional Fiesta-style Super Mini, and 76 kilos lighter, or to put it another way, the weight of an average adult, than a rival 1.2-litre Nissan Duke. Even the heaviest Vitara, a 1.4-litre four-wheel drive model like the one we're trying here, has a curb weight of under 1,250 kilos. Also helping here is the engineering that lies beneath the bonnet. Suzuki's chosen here not to use its mild hybrid technology, but the two booster jet power plants on offer are pretty sophisticated. These use a clever small displacement high torque turbocharger and a variable fuel pressure control system that accurately optimizes fuel injection to suit the way you're driving. Time to get specific on this car's facts and figures, which aren't quite as eye-catching as they used to be, thanks to different test procedures and the deletion of diesel power from the Vitara range. A base three-cylinder, one-litre booster jet manual Vitara manages 45.9 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 139 grams per kilometre of CO2. Or if you've included all-grip four-wheel drive, 39.4 mpg and 162 grams per kilometer of CO2. For the 1.4 litre booster jet engine we're trying here, the figures for a front-driven manual model are 43.6 mpg on the combined cycle and 146 grams per kilometre of CO2. Or if you've included all-grip four-wheel drive, 37.7 mpg and 169 grams per kilometre of CO2. Suzuki's automatic transmission isn't one of those that either maintains or improves frugality, so you'll hit the published efficiency figures by around 5% if you specify it. All the figures we've just quoted are based on readings calculated using the latest WLTP cycle. That's the more real-world relevant, worldwide harmonized light vehicle test procedure. Some other brands still quote official figures using the previous NEDC cycle. So for the time being, it's somewhat difficult to make efficiency comparisons between cars in this segment. What we can tell you from experience is that this car betters rivals like Ford's EcoSport and Vauxhall Mocha X and is comparable with competitors like Kia Stonic and Hyundai's Kona, but lags a little behind the Volkswagen Group and PSA Group models in this class. You can monitor your car's ongoing frugality via a graphical consumption readout that can be selected from the Instrument Binnacle's advanced multi-information display screen and which shows the fuel efficiency achieved over the last 15 minutes. You can also select an idle stop time readout which tells you how long the standard stop-start system has been in operation for. This also tells you the total idle stop fuel save. This is generated, though we're not really sure why you'd ever want to know that. What else? Well, once your Vitara has been registered for three years, it will become eligible for Suzuki's fixed price service package, which will enable you to get servicing carried out for a single fixed price that will include parts, labour and VAT. There are around 180 Suzuki dealers in the UK and they're noted for excellent customer service. 
You can also even cut the cost of regular maintenance with a service payment plan that covers you for anything between one and three garage visits. That could be important because this Vitara needs relatively frequent garage visits every 12 months or 12 and a half thousand miles. On to insurance, well here you're looking at a 12E grouping for the 1 litre model. This 1.4 litre variant is rated at 17E in SZT form or at either 17E or 19A in SZ5, guys. As for residual values, well, these are forecasted to be acceptable by general class standards, provided you don't get too individualistic and personal with optioning up your car. This SZ5 1.4 booster jet manual all grip variant, for instance, will still, according to industry experts, be worth 43% of its original value after three years and 60,000 miles when you come to sell it. Like every Suzuki model, this one comes with a three year, 60,000 mile one warranty. The brand maybe needs to think about extending this to match rivals now offering four, five or even seven year plans. There's also a year's breakdown cover that extends across the whole of Europe and includes roadside recovery. You can extend it to yourself at extra cost via arrangement with your dealer. A 12 year anti-rust guarantee comes with the car too. Customers wanting a small SUV of this kind now have so much choice that for many of them, it must be difficult to know where to start. If that's the case for you, then beginning your search by looking at a great all-rounder in this segment seems to make a lot of sense. And this improved Vitara is certainly that. In this film, we've looked at some of the reasons why. Take, for example, the extra space you get inside compared to key competitors like Nissan's Duke and the high standards of specification that'll sugar the showroom proposition. If you regularly drive on potentially treacherous roads, it'll also matter that this Suzuki is one of the few SUVs in the class that could be ordered with four-wheel drive. This car isn't perfect, of course. It's not quite as affordable as it once was. The infotainment setup could be more smartly presented. And we're disappointed that Suzuki's package of camera-driven safety kit isn't even optional on mainstream models. Otherwise, though, there's still plenty to like about a Vitara. The light curb weight delivers agile handling and competitive efficiency from the much improved range of booster jet engines. Plus, you still get plenty of scope for personalization. This is, in other words, in every sense, a Vitara for the modern world. A car that's a little more than just a fashion statement. Thank you.